Yeah, yeah. Welcome, bite. We're talking NFL Combine this weekend. Uh, this was a really, really, really fun Combine. I don't know if it was because I paid attention more than in previous years, but there are so many things to take away. There are so many impacts from the last 48, 72 hours that are going to drastically affect your rookie drafts, your super flex drafts, your dynasty startup drafts, just fantasy football in general. So we're going to go through you know, the biggest winners and losers, any in-depth takeaways as it relates to measurable size, weights, interviews, on-field testing, dudes getting naked and sprinting as fast as they can for 40 yards and how it translates into your life, what it means for you. So today's video, we're normally doing mock drafts on Monday, but I figured I needed to, we needed to get down here. We need to sit down. We need to lay everything out that happened over the weekend because I know y'all are normal people. So you probably went out and enjoyed your weekend. You know, maybe you had a picnic, maybe you went and got drunk on Saturday night, and then you ordered DoorDash four times on Sunday, and you wasn't trying to watch dudes run 40 yards over and over and over again. That's what I do. That's what we're doing here today. This time of the year is a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise, okay? What we're here to do is put the noise cancelers on your, on your, in your ear holes, okay? So that you don't let all the distraction shit get into your brain. Because there are very few things that actually matter as it relates to the NFL Combine. And the things that do matter, we will put into play tomorrow. So tomorrow's video will be a Superflex rookie mock draft. I think we're going to go into three rounds now that we have all this information. Maybe four. Maybe we'll do the Maybe we'll do the four. And typically each week I do a guest. But this week's guest is going to be y'all. I'm going to grab 11 people from our Discord to join the rookie mock draft. Okay? I'm going to grab 11 people from our Discord. So... Make sure that you join the Discord. It is free to join. That is the only place I will be dropping the links. It will be the first link down below in this video to join the Discord. Again, free to join. All the links to rookie mock drafts going forward will be in the Discord. Make sure you hop in there. Also, probably by the end of this week, we will start to set up Dynasty Leagues for y'all. Also happening through the Discord. So, join the Discord. Rookie mock drafts. Actual Dynasty Startup Leagues, if you've never joined a Dynasty League and want to, or if you want to get another one, two, three, seven of them on the books for this upcoming year, we will be organizing them for you within there, free of charge, free of charge. We ain't trying to make no damn money over here. I like going broke. 2023, the year we're going in the red for real. That being said, this is going to be a long one. We've got to go through every single position. We've got to go through them all. Quarterback, wide receiver, running back, tight end. Not every position. We're not going through the defense. Fuck them. Fuck them for defense. Fuck them, kids. You know what it is. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. As I said, rookie mock draft tomorrow's video. We will be filming that probably tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, but you need to be in the BDGE Discord. Free to join. Link down below if you want to join that mock draft. Now, let's start off with the biggest winners and the biggest losers. Number one, biggest winner, Atlanta Falcons. Number two, Atlanta Falcons fans, me. Big winners, okay, because we're the number eight overall pick. And we're not starting Desmond Ritter this year. If you have Desmond Ritter on your dynasty team, trade his ass away. We will be entering this offseason with a different quarterback. It will be a rookie through the draft. It will be Lamar Jackson. Super Bowl goes through Atlanta in 2023. That is takeaway number one. Let's get to the more objective takeaways, though. So the winners of the the combine overall, we had to break it down positionally, fantasy relevant. Quarterbacks, for sure, big winner. And we're going to dive into each individual player, so just simmer down. Tight ends, massive winners. Wide receivers, big L's being held all around. Running backs, uh... Uh, mixed bag. I think uh, this is a deep class. I don't think anything from the combine necessarily changed it. There were a lot of like those middle tier players that could have went anywhere from mid day two all the way to like round five, six, seven that did not compete at the combine. So we're still a little bit up in flux about these dudes. So running back, I will say probably even keel. The top guys performed at top level. The mid guys were mid, but we'll talk about all of them, everyone in between. Let's start off with the QBs though. Bryce Young expected to be the number one quarterback off the board by most people's opinions. He did not perform at the combine. He did not throw. He did not run, uh, which was a good decision by him because he's going to look like a small child next to those other guys throwing the ball. Like you don't want to have Will Levis and Anthony Richardson throwing the ball 70 yards with a flick of the wrist and then Bryce Young have to go up there and look like, you know, he's attending Anthony Richardson's summer camp or something like that, you know? So Bryce Young, the only thing that mattered was him weighing in and him getting measured. Now, the official measurements for Bryce Young, 5'10 and 1 eighth of an inch, 204 pounds. Being 5'10 
is pretty much an L by most standards at the quarterback position. People on Dynasty Twitter will tell you otherwise for some reason. You know, they'll start yelling about causation and correlation and collaboration and condensation and all these things that they feel they think make them sound smart. I'm not really sure why. Like we all have Microsoft Excel on our computers. We understand how to, you know, shift command up to make things move around the uh, the Excel sheet. They have a hard time being like, hey, that's not good. Like, damn. I wish he wasn't 5'10", but I also still like him and want to draft him as my QB1. That is where I'm at. The 5'10", for me, is not something I wanted to have seen. I wish it was six foot because you have a lot of people like, oh, yeah, but like Drew Brees dominated the last decade. Yeah, Drew Brees was six over six foot and 213 pounds at the combine. That is way bigger than Bryce Young. Here's something I tweeted out yesterday that made some people mad. Again, the, the correlation condensation people looked at the top 15 fantasy quarterbacks just from last year and I listed their heights next to them. Every single one of them over six feet tall. And there's a lot of people like, this is a flawed stat because there are not, no starting quarterbacks in the NFL that are under six feet tall. So therefore, of course, there's not going to be anyone on this list. And I'm like, that's kind of my point, though. You ever heard of fucking Darwinism? Like, there's a reason that none of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL are under six feet tall because they there's a selective process. And typically, the, the higher you get up in the chain of how talented or how these different traits end up translating into being a successful NFL quarterback, being tall fucking matters, clearly. It's almost like, okay, me putting out a list of the top 15 fantasy wide receivers from last year, listing their 40 times and being like, all of them ran under a 5-0 40-yard dash, right? Like a 5-0 40-yard dash. And people being like, that's stupid because there's no NFL wide receivers that run under a 5-0. So, you know, we don't have a sample size. It's like, that's exactly my point. It's tough to be both. It's tough to be a wide receiver that runs under 5 and also be in the NFL. It's tough to be 5'10 and also be a successful quarterback. Now, listen, I know there have been examples of it. And you could say this is an outlier. You could say it's not an outlier. I don't really know what qualifies for that. I'm not a fucking scientist. I'm not a data scientist. I'm just someone who tries to be okay at this game of fantasy football. Now, the other part of this equation here is Bryce Young weighs in at 204. Everyone knows that was like an external validation 204 pound thing. Like, there's a reason he didn't do a single thing on the field. There's a, a reason he didn't throw. There's a reason he didn't run. There's a reason he ain't out there doing fucking jumping jacks at the minimum. It's because he's done nothing but drink, eat, hydrate, eat, and eat over the last, you know, two, three, five, seven weeks. You simply just look at, you know, this was the common comparison. Bryce Young and Kyler Murray. Both came in at the combine, 5'10", one-eighth of an inch. Kyler Murray, 207 pounds. Bryce Young, 204 pounds. I think you could pretty, like, just use your human being fucking brain at a minimum to understand that these two are not built the same. Uh, Kyler Murray is thick. Kyler Murray is really 205 pounds. He is at a playing weight of 205 pounds. Bryce Young is slender. He is skinny. He is smaller. He is leaner. He has a less wide frame. He's going to be playing at 195 pounds. So I think overall, like, I guess it was cool that he weighed in at 204. It was not cool that he that he came in at 510. All that being said, though, in terms of being a quarterback, like, yes, Russell Wilson's under six feet tall. Yes, Kyler Murray, you know, has been a top five fantasy quarterback in points per game multiple times throughout his career. Everyone at that height needs to get it done differently. And up to this point, Bryce Young has been an outlier. So if you're going to look at someone and be like, man, don't draft him because he's an outlier, it's like he's already proven that he is an outlier. So I don't know if I want to go. I'm, I'm just I'm just speaking out here. I'm just talking about the things that mattered at the combine. You can dictate whether or not you think it matters. 5'10", 204. Bryce Young, to me, has shown enough at college. Bryce Young has shown enough against really high-level opponents, has done it for a long enough time that I feel comfortable with Bryce Young still as my quarterback one. Nothing about the combine moved him up or down in my rankings. And I also think he's going to end up being the number one pick in the NFL draft. I don't think any of these measurables mattered. So all that shit I was just talking doesn't matter. Bryce Young, QB1, stays there. Accurate, poise, playmaker. Like, he's done it all and against high-level defenses up to this point in his career. The overall point here is, like, you can you can admit both. You could say it's an L, but I also still like the dude, right? That's, that's what gets me fucking fired up about this time of the year. CJ Stroud massive, massive winner. If you look at Dane Brugler's tweets, uh, as I walk out of Lucas Oil, two workouts are sticking with me, Stroud and ja Jackson Smith and Jigba. The top two performances I saw today were both Buckeyes. Neither were surprising. There was just so many tweets about this, about how genuinely good CJ Stroud looked throwing the ball, delivering the ball, how accurate, how timely, and even how strong his arm looked relative to how people expected it next to Anthony Richardson and Will Levis. And he did it effortlessly. Uh, huge win of the combine. It just kind of confirmed what people already 
believed about his arm. I think his arm is better than what people were expecting. And I think his legs are going to be worse than people are expecting. Okay. He led the country last year in passes of 30 plus yards. This is per the athletic podcast that I just listened to uh, a couple hours ago. He led the country in passes of over 30 plus yards last year. He also, over the first 27 games of his career, forced one single missed tackle. One. And then against Georgia, he forced three. Okay. So you tell me what the outlier is here. That's like a, a running back or a wide receiver scoring a touchdown over 27 games. And all of a sudden he scores three. Do we, is he a touchdown scorer now? Is he a guy that's a goal line workhorse? Is he a guy that's going to score 15 touchdowns in a year? It's not Stroud's game, but that's fine. You just need to look at him as you've looked at any pocket passer that's very, very accurate and maybe sprinkles in some playmaking ability every now and then. But Stroud, big winner. And I feel like if you're a fan of a team picking in the top three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or you believe is going to trade up into the top draft picks to grab a guy like Stroud, I would be really happy. So Stroud, like Bryce Young, again, coming in over 200. Good, I guess. 5'10", not great. But Stroud looked amazing on the field. Um, he's going to be one of the top picks. I would Honestly, I'd be surprised if it wasn't Bryce Young, QB1, CJ Stroud, QB2. And the biggest on-field winner, of course, was Anthony Richardson. I, by this point, you know, 12 hours later, 24 hours later, whenever the fuck they, they, they went on Saturday and filming this on Monday morning. Anthony Richardson is the single most athletic quarterback of all time. He just ransacked the NFL combine. 6'4", 244 pounds. He is massive. 244 pounds. He's built like a linebacker and he runs like a really fast running back. 4'4", 340 yard dash. Now he set the combine record for quarterbacks with his vertical jump of 40 and a half inches and his broad jump 10 9 set the combine record for quarterbacks both of those numbers both vertical jump and broad jump he was like really really out here putting up wilt chamberlain type number and, and the 443 was not a record but the only dudes that have beat him at the quarterback position that have ran faster than him were dudes that weigh like rg3 michael vick dudes that weighed like 30 to 60 pounds less than he did uh but here's the thing like none of that should be a surprise we knew he was going to be the most athletic quarterback at the combine did we know he's going to be the number one most athletic quarterback of all time no but like being the number five most athletic quarterback at the combine and being the number one of all time sh shouldn't change anything for the process. When he was in the throwing drills, like there were some things that were a little bit off. There were some things that didn't look great. And these are the things that we expected already. So I think like double counting the athleticism is stupid. And then being like, no, we're going to double count it because he was the most athletic quarterback of all time, as opposed to the third. Mo like, I, I think people are just getting like way too crazy about it. I think he was, I, I think every sign already pointed to him being a top 10 pick and now, I just don't think there's any way he drops past pick number six. The Lions are at six, and they want to let him sit behind Jared Goff for a year and then let him rip. Cool. There might be a team. There are multiple teams already that have come out and said he's their QB2 on their board, but they're not in the quarterback market. Are there teams in the quarterback market that see him as a QB2 and want to jump up to get him? I still think teams are going to feel way more comfortable. Young, Stroud, Richardson. So Richardson went crazy. He is still going to need time to develop. He's only a one-year starter. And it wasn't like he dominated when he was on the field. They compare him to a lot of dudes who were absolutely dominant on a college football field. If Richardson gets a starting job at Florida for three years, if he's there freshman, sophomore, junior year, and he gets a start all three years, maybe by the time he's a junior, he is dominating. Maybe he is leading them to a national championship. Maybe he is putting up Heisman type numbers, but he didn't in the one year that he did. And that's the only sample size we could really work off of right now. So yeah, he's got the pieces in place to be a crazy quarterback at the next level, especially for fantasy. I think that's kind of like the great part about this is the hard part isn't on us as fantasy players, right? It feels like those three guys are kind of layups in terms of fantasy QB production, Young, Stroud, Richardson. The hard part is NFL quarterbacks, NFL GMs, NFL teams are the ones that are in a tough position right now. They're the ones that need to decide whether or not these guys are going to be good quarterbacks at the next level, whether or not they're going to be turnover prone, whether or not they're going to be able to make plays, whether or not they're going to be able to develop, right? Not on us. We don't give a fuck. Just put them out on the field. They're going to put up fantasy points for us. It's kind of beautiful. Will Levis, he performed as expected. He's big, he's strong, he's athletic, huge cannon arm, uh, a little bit wonky on the mechanics, like his footwork and his his upper body seem to like be in different places sometimes, you know, they seem to be doing some different things, but again, not as unexpected as anyone should, you know, come out and say it is. I think he's kind of comfortably as the QB4 in this class right now. If you have a top four pick in your rookie drafts this year, you should feel fucking phenomenal. And I'd probably go as far as saying top six because JSN balled out, which we'll get to in a minute. And Will Levis, listen, he's going to be a top 10 draft pick in this year's draft class. I think almost certainly we have four quarterbacks going the top 10, probably top nine. I think Will Levis, top 10 draft pick, that's worthy of the 106, right? People were taking Kenny Pickett at the 104, 105, 106 last year. He was 
pick number 20 or whatever he was. Will Levis is going to be a top 10 pick this year. If you have a top six pick, you're getting someone really, either really good or really valuable. That's how I will, that's how I'll put it. Uh, so overall, I think this is actually a really, really exciting quarterback class uh, and, and just made the top of the rookie drafts crazy exciting. And now I know there's some arguments going on on Twitter like, oh, is does Anthony Richardson take the 101 now in Superflex League? This is my stance. This has been my stance, and this will be my stance unless Bijan drops like the third round, which will never happen. Bijan's your 101. If you have fucked around with any sort of dynasty startup drafts this offseason yet, here is what you'll find. Bijan Robinson, right? If you're starting a brand new dynasty league next week in two months, Bijan Robinson is a top 10 to 12 pick. May I've seen him go as early as like seven. I've seen him go as late as like 13 or 14. But he is, for the most part, a first pick, a first round pick in dynasty startup drafts. If you're in a dynasty startup draft, a first round pick is so fucking valuable. It's the best player that you're going to have for the next five years. There is no quarterback in this draft class. I don't care how early or how good a rich looked yesterday. You're not taking Anthony Richardson with your first round dynasty startup pick. It's just, there's no chance it's happened. Most of these QBs are going to end up being second, third, fourth round startup picks. So when you look at it that way, it makes it way more clear. It makes it when you start to value players based on where they're going in dynasty startups and you just translate that to your rookie drafts, it makes it way more clear for you. OK, Anthony Richardson's not going to be the number seven, eight or nine overall pick in a dynasty startup draft. He's not going before Bijan. So I think obviously there's a time and place depending on your roster. If you're stacked at running back, you know, and you only have one starting quarterback and or if you're in just like a pure rebuild, maybe you think about a rich over Bijan Robinson. I think it'd be wildly ignorant to take a quarterback over Bijan Robinson in this class. But before we dive into running backs and Bijan and all that kind of stuff, again, we're going to be doing a full rookie mock draft, a full Superflex rookie mock draft tomorrow's video. If you want to join that, join the Discord. First link down below, free to join. I will drop the link in there. I'll let y'all know throughout you know the day tonight uh, what time I plan on actually doing the draft, so you'll be updated throughout. You gotta have your you gotta got you gotta have your trigger fingers ready because I drop that and people join quick. Big fucking quick, okay? We want to keep going down the Saturday slate, which is quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends. Running backs performed yesterday on Sunday, so we'll get to them last. So I want to get to the wide receivers. Now, this was probably the biggest L of all positions. We liked a lot of them beforehand, and then a lot of them either tested way worse than we expected speed-wise, less explosive. A lot of them were way more undersized than we imagined, too. How many of these dudes end up going in the first round now? I think there's like a really good chance we have more tight ends going the first round than wide receivers, which is something that like, how how many times has that happened in the last 10 years? Maybe once? I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think there was a draft where like Ingram and Joku, they went in the first round. So there's three tight ends in that, OJ Howard. But I'm assuming there was more wide receivers in that round than tight end. But regardless, I think there's better tight ends at the top than there are wide receivers. The majority of dudes that we were excited about yesterday did not win. They either kind of stayed flat where they were beforehand or dropped down. The majority, not all of them. We'll just start from the top and say that Jackson Smith and Jigba was the biggest winner yesterday. He did not run the 40-yard dash because he wasn't going to test great, but that's not how he wins his game anyways. If you look at this tweet from Josh Norris, you look at his three-cone time, you look at his 20 uh, shuttle, they were legitimately elite. And this is where you want a dude like him in the slot who's really quick you know, he's not fast, but he's quick. A dude who can separate, a dude who's smooth. This is where you want to see him win. That three-cone time was the 12th best since 2007. The 20-yard shuttle was the fourth best since 2007. You're talking about 99th percentile agility. And in the pass catching drills, like the only thing anybody had to say was how dominant he was, how smooth he looked, how good he looked as a, just a, a football player. So JSM was a massive winner, and this will probably move him up to my wide receiver one in my rankings in large part to when you compare him to who I had as a wide receiver one, Jordan Addison, Addison comes in at 5'11", 173. I knew he was on the smaller side, but it's a bit light. And then he runs a 4'49". So you look at a guy that he's compared to like Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith is light, but he's also six feet. So he's a little bit taller. He also ran a 4'44", a 4'39", at his pro day. So he's faster. He's taller a little bit better athletically. Now, size doesn't affect route running. Overall, I just don't think it was a great over, overall showing for Jordan Addison. He didn't come away as like a great athlete that you kind of saw on film. Every wide receiver who underperforms comes out and say, I pulled my back, I pulled my hamstring, whatever, whatever. Like, okay, we, I'm, I'm sure you fucking did. We'll see at the pro day, you run so much better. It's all, it's all fucking nonsense. If you're not going to run well, don't run. Do the hamstring pull, do the fake hamstring pull beforehand. 
Don't say it after you run your, your 40 a half, uh, a half a tenth second slower than you expect it to. Now, Quentin Johnston, really interesting. He comes in at 6'3", 208. So it's lighter than like the 217, 220 that he has been listed at in college. A little bit shorter, 6'3", as opposed to 6'4", maybe even closer to the 6'2 side. But I don't hate that. There are not many wide receivers that come in at 6'4", at the NFL level that like really dominate. I almost feel like you're almost too long. You're like too long to move too quick. So Quentin Johnson being 6'2", 6'3", Makes a little bit more sense when you watch him play about how shifty and how fast twitchy he is. So he's got the thin frame. He didn't run. He didn't run the 40-yard dash, uh, but he jumped out of the fucking gym. His burst scores were crazy. And people were concerned about his hands. Uh, the gauntlet was something that people were going to keep their eyes on in terms of, like, you know, having to move around and catch balls and focus and all that kind of shit. He's got a lot of focus drops. Uh, apparently, he looked great, natural catching the ball. And Johnson is someone I've been slowly getting more and more excited about. And depending on draft capital, I could see him moving up to my wide receiver, too. He was one fifth plus 115 odds to be the first wide receiver off the board prior to the combine, which was the, the favorite to do it. I think there's a chance that JSN now jumps him in terms of odds on sportsbooks. And if that's the case, just based on the hype coming out of the combine, if that's the case, I think Johnson becomes the best value. I don't know if he's it, like the best odds to actually do it, but he, he would become the best value on the board to be the first wide receiver off the board. I think there's a really, really good chance that Johnson is still the first wide receiver off the board, despite not testing, and despite how good JSN looked yesterday. Jalen Hyatt, Tennessee wide receiver, very hyped up. You know, I've seen him in mock drafts be the first wide receiver off the board. Not really sure. He's uh, he's someone like before. I think my rankings for him are just going to be dictated by draft capital and landing spot. Comes in at six foot one seventy six, so very thin frame, super slender, not very tall. Was supposed to run in like the low four threes. Runs a four four. Uh, great burst. Really, really like jumped really, really well. Unsurprising. I'm not really worried about him not running like a 4 3 2 because I don't think there's any like, I don't think there's been any numbers that have been pulled that tell you that like running that fast as a wide receiver actually matters and translate to fantasy. But I do think when that's like your game, you know, when your game is being able to take the top off the defenses, there are a lot of dudes that run a 4 4 in the NFL. There are not a lot of dudes who are like 6'4 that run a 4 4. There are a lot of dudes that are 175 pounds that run a 4 4. Like his weight adjusted speed score is in the 47th percentile. So Hyatt, again, I'm just going to let the NFL draft kind of dictate how I feel about him in my rankings. I don't think he was necessarily a winner or a loser as it relates to the combine. I'll tell you who was a massive fucking loser. Kayshawn Booty. This dude was booty at the combine. He comes in at 5'11", 195. I thought he was going to be six foot 205. I thought he was a little bit stockier. I thought he was a little bit more filled out. Turns out he's not. 5'11", 195. He goes out on Twitter and says he's going to run a 4'3". Runs a 4.5. Uh, his jumps were awful, literally in the bottom second percentile. Uh, a horrible showing for him at the Combine. I don't know what's going on with him, but I will say I like him enough that if he becomes a discount in rookie drafts, like if he becomes a third-round rookie pick, you know, he's going off 3.3, three, 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 Like I'm definitely on board for that based on how good his college career was early on, how early he broke out at a big school, et cetera, and what I saw on tape. But these numbers are not, are not good for – Someone that we hoped had had some some real upside at the position. I still think he's good after the catch. I still think he's got very strong hands. I still think he's got all that stuff that doesn't necessarily get tested by athleticism, but not great for Mr. Booty. Uh, then you have this grouping of like great route runners that are explosive, but they're undersized. You have Josh Downs, Zay Flowers, Tank Dell, Tyler Scott. Josh Downs was probably the most disappointing for me. He comes in at 5'9", 171. So he's short and he's small. And he's light like that. You know, I've said this so many times throughout the offseason. It's like, listen, if you're going to be tall and skinny, I'm cool. If you're going to be short and thick, I'm also kind of, I'm a little less cool with it, but I'm cool enough with it. You got to be one or the other. Like one of those measurables needs to be at least average, if not above average for me to feel comfortable about you playing at a high level at the next level. 5'9", 171, not good. He also ran a 4'4", I thought he was going to run in the low 4'4". Uh, 12th percentile weight adjusted speed score. His burst score was great. 88th percentile, which you do love to see. And I feel like that probably plays more to his game. He's not someone who beats you with long speed, but he is someone who's athletic, makes plays, is bursty. And I still love his game. I still absolutely fucking love his game. Really strong going up to get the ball. One of the best contested catch players in this entire class. Now we have to hope that he's used correctly. I think this combine performance probably hurts his draft stock a little bit, which of course translates into your rookie drafts. If you can get him at a discount, I'm back in on Josh Downs. But, you know, I was looking at him as someone who I thought you were going to have to take that like the 112, 201, 202. I'm not 
probably going to use a pick that early on someone that's 5'9", 171. Tank Dell, you want to talk about 5'9", 171 being small. Tank Dell, 5'8", 165. If you have not watched this dude play, he is so fucking exciting. He looks like It looks like when he's playing, he is playing against smaller schools, so this kind of makes sense. It looks like you're watching high school film. It looks like you're watching like a Rivals.com high school uh, highlight film when Tank Dell is on the field. He just looks different. He doesn't look built out, which a lot of high school players are like thin. They just use their athleticism to win. He looks different on the field. He is such a good playmaker. 5'8", 165. He was supposed to come out here and burn the four threes. Ends up running a 4'4'9", which is brutal for someone who's 165. I really thought he had a champ chance to creep into that like 4'3'8", 4'4'0 range. Still a really fun player. Still a great playmaker, but also really hard to get behind someone who is this small without elite level speed. Tyler Scott, the Cincinnati wide receiver who has low-key been getting a ton of hype over the last couple weeks, uh, was also supposed to blaze. I want to say his combine time on prize picks was like a 4-3-1. Nailed the fucking over on that. Ran a 4-4-4, so way above the time that he was expected, uh, but came in 5-11-185. 5-11-185, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that for someone that plays the game the way he does, right? Like, Kayshawn Booty, I'm not cool with that because you're supposed to be like a possession outside wide receiver dude who's supposed to be able to strong manhandle people. Tyler Scott is more of like uh, he's being comp to, you know, Tyler Lockett and people of that world where you're undersized, but you're so fast and twitchy and uh, good enough route runner to separate. So I think this is an overall good day for him. Uh, did super, super well in his jumps. His burst score, very, very, very high. So 5'11", 185, 4, 4, 4. I think he's going to be a big-time riser. In this class, uh, don't be surprised if he's a top 50 pick, which would probably translate based on where the wide receivers are probably dropping down to in the NFL draft now. Top 15-ish pick in rookie drafts. So get acquainted with this kid, Tyler Scott. Also get acquainted with Zay Flowers, man. Do beefed up. You love to see it. I really can't stop thinking about this picture. It's just one of the craziest pictures I've ever seen. The time frame for this was not, it couldn't have been that long. Like you're just training for the NFL draft. It's got to be a month, two months. To put on that much muscle without putting on a lot of fat is, he needs to be studied. Look at that. That, that chain went from a fucking extra large to a youth small real quick. His trap's fucking bigger than mine. You serious? I don't think his combine performance was like crazy good. You know, 4'4'2 at 182 pounds. Not great for his size. So he comes in at 5'9", 182. This picture was released like a week ago. So I don't think there's really much fluctuation in his weight. I don't think he's like beefing up or losing weight in order to do anything specific at the combine 5'9", 182 4, 4, 2, 40 yard dash 37th percentile when you're talking about weight adjusted speed score good burst score 64th percentile um in a vacuum i think the combine performance was you know okay but weight adjusted i think one of my concerns is probably his arm length i think his arm length is very very short i think this probably pigeonholes him to being a slot wide receiver at the next level so it's like the size pretty much but i think he was a winner based on the fact that there were so many other losers at the combine at the wide receiver position and we'll go through some of them really, really quickly. And there was 43 wide receivers that performed at the combine, so I can't go through all of them. I think Cedric Tillman, the other Tennessee wide receiver, was a massive winner. His uh, relative athletic score, RAS, RAS, however they use it, which has become extremely popular over the last couple of years, 955, which is really, really good. Dude comes in at six feet, 213 pounds, runs a 454. I think Cedric Tillman is going to be one of the biggest risers post NFL draft as well. Jonathan Mingo over there at Ole Miss at 226 pounds. Blazes the 40 at 446, 95th percentile weight adjusted speed score. Marvin Mims out of Oklahoma, who I'm not personally a fan of. I won't really be drafting in rookie drafts, but he blazed the 438. I don't think that's a huge surprise. 5'9, 177. So undersized, he's able to stretch defenses, but that's kind of all he does, in my opinion. If he's not running a route where he's just running like a straight line, some point of the route has to be a straight line. That's how he separates. He's not a great route runner, other than that. A.T. Perry, 6'3 and a half, 198, running a 447. Charlie Jones out of Purdue was a big winner. So a lot of smaller school dudes or a lot of like lesser known dudes that ended up performing better than the top school dudes. So uh, you can go check out any of the aforementioned dudes I just named. I'd go check out NFL.com to go see the combine performances. You can go look at playerprofiler.com. I think they have all of the athletic testing pretty much updated on their chart, which shows you the percentiles of the performances and stuff like that. Uh, and if you have questions or want my opinion on a different, you know, wide receiver that I didn't talk about, drop it down in the comment section. We can move over to the tight ends, man. The tight ends weren't, they went fucking crazy yesterday, running absurd time. They were like the, the running backs of last year, the tight ends this year were like six running backs. I actually went back and looked because as I was filling out slips on prize picks for like the over-unders on combine times, I was nervous because I... Every every player was listed way too low, right? There was like two two players at the entire combine this year that ran under a four three, but like there was nine players on prize picks that were listed at a four three over under, and I was like, I'm hitting the more on basically every player here, and it was super profitable. I think I hit fourteen out of seventeen picks yesterday, but I was nervous because last year, if you remember, it was like brand new turf, 
times were flying. Running backs, over the last 20 years, there have been, I think, 27 running backs that have ran under a 4-4. So you're talking about 4-3-9 or lower at the combine, like 25 or 27 running backs, and over the last 20 years, and like six of them were last year. And I was like, that's, you know, that's that class wasn't that good. They just w- were running on an absurd turf. So I was like, maybe that'll happen this year. Didn't happen in the other positions, but it happened at tight end. I think the biggest winner here is Darnell fucking Washington, man. 6'7", 264 pounds, the Georgia tight end. Played behind Brock Bowers, who's going to be the tight end one in the class next year, and a very highly coveted tight end coming out. Darnell Washington runs a 4'6'4 four, four at 6'7", 264 pounds. A 95th percentile weight adjusted speed score. He's also a good pass catcher. He's also very athletic. He has good hands. He didn't have production because obviously he's competing with you know 10 other five-star players on the Georgia offense, including the one dude at his position that's an extremely highly coveted prospect and will be the tight end one in the class next year. So Darnell Washington will not escape from the first round of the NFL draft and more so because he's also a sixth lineman. He's also another, he's a great blocker, especially at that size. So you're talking about a guy that can catch the ball, a guy that's really fucking fast for his size, but also a dude who like, even if a team drafts him into a run first offense, will will be on the field for all three downs because he could do anything on all three downs. So Darnell Washington, huge winner here. And I'm not sure how high to put him. I'm really not because prior to the combine, Don Kincaid was my fucking guy, but Kincaid did not perform at the combine because he's uh, rehabbing from a slight back fracture um, that he suffered against USC in their finale, which he fucking gutted through. And listen, I I think injuries are one of the biggest advantages that you can have in fantasy football in terms of paying attention and understanding if they matter or if they don't matter. And I've listened to many podcasts from many different doctors on the situation. The back fracture in Dalton Kincaid is a, is a non-factor. It will not move teams up or down the draft board for him. Uh, will not affect him long-term future. Do not worry about Don Kincaid's back right now. He will perform at the Pro Day, hopefully, Utah's, which is at the end of this month, I think 324. Michael Mayer, which was, for a lot of people, the tight end one for a while, ends up running a 4.740. He's not a dude who blows away the athleticism, and he looked even worse relative to this class because everyone else was running 4.6s, 4.61, 4.55s, like crazy shit. Michael Mayer is still a great all-around back, or great all-around tight end can catch the ball, can run routes, can block, contested catcher, still should go in the first round for sure. Just not a big winner at the combine. Sam Laporta out of Iowa. You know, stop me if you fucking heard this before. We have a great prospect coming out of Iowa at the tight end position. Sam Laporta at 245 pounds goes out and runs a 4.59 40-yard dash. In most classes, Laporta is going to be like the tight end two at worst. But in this class, he's kind of an afterthought because you hear the names of Kincaid. And you hear Musgrave's athleticism. And you hear, hear Michael Mayer as a consensus one. And you hear Darnell Washington, freak. You don't hear much about Laporta. I think Laporta could sneaky be one of the best tight ends out of this class. And he proved it at the combine. Dude's legit. Dude is very legit as a pass catcher and as a playmaker. So keep an eye on Laporta. You have Luke Musgrave, who we knew was going to be really athletic. 6'6", 253, runs a 4'6'1". Super good testing. Uh, still not a huge fan of him just as a football player. But he's athletic as shit. So some team's going to give him probably early draft capital and see what they could develop him as. I have the same question with Musgraves if I do, as I did as Mike Kosicki coming out. Didn't really love him coming out. I'm like, okay, you're an athlete, but are you good at football? Yet yet to be seen. No production really at tight end at college. Uh, so I'll leave that one up to you. But this this is a world where, like, I don't, want, I don't want to go on record and say I think four tight ends are going to go in the first round, but I think we could have five or six go in the top 50. Michael Mayer, Donald Washington, Kincaid, Laporta, Musgrave, any of these other dudes. And the other random dude who went crazy yesterday, Zach Kuntz, Old Dominion tight end, six foot seven, 255 pounds. Look at his player profiler page. Look at those bars on the right side. Look at those fucking bars. Those are Harry Mack level bars. And it's like, why are we just learning about him now? Why is this six seven, 255 pound 455 running 40 yard dash dude just being learnt about now. I don't know how true this is, but Penn State in 2018, I, I heard on a podcast yesterday, they offered these the following three tight ends scholarships. Whoever were the first two commit were the two that got the scholarships. Pat Firemuth, Zach Kuntz, Kyle Pitts. Kuntz and Firemuth took the scholarships. Pitts ends up in Florida. The rest is history, obviously. So he started back in Penn State in 2018. Totals three catches in his three years there. But again, to be fair, he's behind Pat Firemuth. He's probably a top tight end in in the world right now, right? You could say in the NFL, but that means in the world. So you're at a college program. There's 130 college programs in the country, D1. 
you happen to have a top 10 tight end in the world that you have to play behind for the three years. Penn State's notorious for this. Having an amazing starter with a really, really good backup who doesn't get a lot of play time. After the third year, he says, fuck it, I'm going to transfer to Old Dominion. He breaks out there, obviously. He's a fucking freak athlete. The competition, you're playing against teams like Hampton, Liberty, Buffalo, uh, fucking Louisiana Tech, Florida Atlantic, Tulsa, Charlotte. Like, you better fucking break out. But I think there's context to put behind him. So I'm, I'm really, really intrigued to see where this kid goes. And I'm intrigued to go watch some more tape on him to see if he's actually a good player. And last but certainly not least, the running back position. They went on Sunday by themselves. You know what my favorite fucking part of the offseason is? When Noah picks like three running backs, one of which is always someone that n no one fucking knows. Last year was Julius Chestnut. Had it not been for Noah, I don't think anyone on the planet would have heard of this kid Julius Chestnut. Julius Chestnut, I think he went undrafted or maybe he was a seventh round pick or some shit. Ends up making the 53 man roster. He, he loved Julius Chestnut. He played at like some small school. I don't even remember. This is how much I don't give a fuck about Julius Chestnut. But Noah always finds these random ass dudes through his numbers and his data that like say something that nobody else finds. And he go and he goes in on them. He, like he loves it. Like he always tweets about them. And he's like the one dude that goes out of his way to talk about these dudes. And they always overperform and they always make the roster. And they don't always like make an impact at the NFL level. But calling out a dude that literally no one has said anything about. And then the dude makes a 53 man roster. He's behind Derrick Henry. Is like a, it's a fucking dub. It's a huge dub. And this year it was Evan Hull. And Evan Hull, I'm glad he got this fucking video out on record like a week ago. He made a whole ass video about Northwestern's Evan Hull. And then Evan Hull was one of the biggest winners at the combine. And now everybody's talking about Evan Hull. And Noah was the first dude to get, like no one saw anything about this kid. And then Noah goes crazy with it. And then the dude always overperforms. And then he's going to get draft capital. And then he's going to make the team. And it'll probably get some work this year. So fucking listen when, when he speaks. And he also like finds guys that everybody has ranked really fucking highly and just shits on them all off season. And he's typically right. He's not right about everything, but there are things that I feel like when he goes out of his way to go crazy about, he typically ends up in the right. My favorite part of all, all the offseason. Biggest winner. So we had a lot of dudes that did not test at the Combine. Uh, Dwayne McBride, my favorite, Kendra Miller. One of Noah's favorites, Zach Evans, did not test. He did weigh in. I think he was like 202 pounds, which is not good. So we didn't have a lot of dudes do the 40, so we don't have like a ton of takeaways here. Uh, Devon A. Chain ran the 4-3-2. A lot of people expected him to be in the 4-2s. Nailed the fucking over on that one on prize picks. I want so much money. You really got to get on the combine as soon as they drop it. It's so easy to win money on that shit. 4-3-2. Uh, Devon A. Chain comes in at 5'8 and a half, 188 pounds. So he's not, you know, he's not 175. He's not 185. He's 188 and still runs a 4-3-2. So he'll be playing around 190 pounds. So any concerns you had about Devon, I, the combine should not change anything as it pertains to Devon A. Chain. Nothing should have changed here for you. Jameer gives blazes a 4-3-6 40-yard dash. That's fucking fast. And also shouldn't really be a surprise. But he did come in at 5'9", 199 pounds. I'm going to be honest. For where you're going to have to take him in rookie drafts, and this might be a sucker fucking take, but 199 for a running back, man. Ah, I have a really, really hard time getting behind him as like the 105, 106 right now. I think if you can get him at the back of the first, I'll be in because he's such an explosive, crazy playmaker. And he might end up getting first round draft capital. So maybe like he'll move up, but I'm not about to take Gibbs over a top 10 QB. I'm not going to take Gibbs over probably a bunch of these first round wide receivers drafted. 199 pounds, what that means is like you have to land in a spot that's going to use you correctly. You're not going to be a three down back, you know, and yes, yeah, so you'll see tweets of like, let's name every Hall of Fame running back under 200 pounds, LaShawn McCoy, Ray Rice, Jamal Charles, Brian Westbrook, let, you know, let's name all those guys, four or five dudes out of 500 out of a thousand that are under 200 pounds that don't typically get it done. When you look at like the average top 15 fantasy running backs year over year like they're 210 pounds they're 217 pounds they're you know in that range because the bigger you are the workload gets higher and higher and for Gibbs that kind of scares me a little bit man so for me to move him all the way up my rankings I'm he's gonna need to get draft capital and probably land in a spot that I feel comfortable that will use him correctly I brought Corey Bush on the uh on the channel last week to do a mock draft with me shout out to fantasy stock exchange Chase Brown he said was his favorite like under the radar running back, kid out of Illinois, uh, comes in at 5'10", 210 pounds, runs a 4'4", 40-yard dash. Really, really good. 95th percentile burst score, jumped out of the gym. Absolute winner here uh, from 
the combine. So Chase Brown, keep an eye on where he gets drafted. Bijan, we already know, is a GOAT. Going to get drafted early. 4 4 6 40-yard dash at 214 pounds. Evan Hole, winner, like I said before, out of Northwestern. Kind of a funky running style. Really good pass catcher. Comes in at 5'10", 209 pounds. Runs the 4 4 7 40-yard dash. If you're going to give me 210 pounds and sub 4 5 40, like, I'm in on you. I'm in on you. You look at his athleticism score across the board, it's all above average, if not way above average. So he's going to depend on draft capital. Like he could still, even testing like this, he could still end up being like a round five, six pick, which would be devastating, but still worth keeping an eye on. Zach Charbonnet comes in at six foot, 214 pounds, runs a four, five, three. So a little bit lighter, but a little bit faster than I expected. So he's, he'll, I don't think anything with the combine was a winner or a loser for him. Tank Bigsby coming in at six foot, 210. We know the size. Four, five, six, forty is okay. I don't think his calling card was ever going to be speed. Another dude that I'll kind of let the draft capital and landing spot dictate where I like him. A lot of people love uh, Roshan Johnson out of Texas. The dude behind Bijan Robinson comes in at six foot two nineteen, runs a four, five, eight, forty yard dash. That's obviously uh, serious numbers over there. Sixty fourth percentile for weight adjusted speed score. His burst score was kind of shitty. I'm gonna like. I, I think the popular thing has become to say that like Roshan Johnson's like your favorite running back in this class. He's going to be a great fantasy running back. I'm still pretty much on the record. I think I'm just going to say, I think he's going to have a very long career. I think statistically when you look back, he'll have a very good career over the long haul. I don't know if there's any points in his career, which he becomes a better fantasy player than he does a real life NFL player. I would love my team to have him. I would love to have a dude with his leadership, with his build, his body, and his overall like athleticism. He's a dude who could do everything if you ask him to. I don't think you're ever going to see massive fantasy upside outside of like an outlier year like Jamal Williams had this year where, you know, if you're going to get fucking 40 goal line touches, yeah, you're going to end up having a good fantasy season. Roshan Johnson, um, like him. I don't love him. I like him. I don't love him. I think people are like talking themselves into loving him for some reason. It's, it's getting kind of weird, honestly. Uh, the last dude I think is notable here is uh, Kenny McIntosh. He was a dude that I really liked. Comes in at six foot, 204 pounds. Runs a 4 6 2 40 yard dash. I needed one of those numbers to be better. I needed him to either come in at like 212 to 215 because now he's not really a big back. Six foot 204, you're talking about like tall and lean and not big. And then you're also kind of slow. So having a, you know, listen, running above a 4 6 is not like, it's not a game change. It's not a, it's not a bullet to the head. Josh Jacobs did it, Montgomery, but all those dudes are 215, 220, even maybe even bigger. Uh, so I think what this probably does is relegate McIntosh to pretty much a third down role, to pretty much the pass catching back, where if he came in faster or if he came in bigger, I think there's a there's an upside chance of him eating into the first and second down role of whatever team he's on. I think he came away as a loser from the combine just based on the the, the speed, based on the weight. Not great. I still like him as a runner, but this definitely caps the upside, I think, from you know relative to other starting running backs. I think that's all we got. Oh, man. That was a long one. We got like an hour in. Whew. Stay hydrated. Stay tucked. Uh, we're going to be doing very, very in-depth profiles on every single fantasy relevant rookie, by the way, on bdge.co. So you can go pre-order the draft guide right now if you want to. Show you how to do it. bdge.co. Boom, bang, boom. Rookie draft guide. Pre-order. Pre-order price for probably the next week or so. Boom. You're going to get all of Noah's RB data. data. All the shit that helps you find the Evan Holes and the Julius Chestnuts of the world. We'll have our rookie rankings, obviously, always updated. We have our in-depth rookie profiles in our rookie draft guide. It's magnificent. We work very fucking hard on it. So go pre-order it for a discounted price right now. But most importantly, join the BDG Discord. Rookie draft either tonight or early tomorrow morning. Have your fingers sticky. Have them ready. Have them prepared. Have your brain prepared. Have your fingers ready. Because I don't want you fucking drafting Kenny McIntosh 107. I don't want Jameer Gibbs dropping to me at the 209. I don't want any of this bullshit happening. We want realistic rookie drafts that help people. That improve their lives. Improve their livelihoods. I hope this video improved your livelihood. If it did, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I shall see y'all tomorrow. Get wild. Get wild.